What's poppin'? It's Mello, back at you with another video, and today what we're getting into in the same swishy jacket, just see, we get into chords. So, as far as chord progressions, that'll be the main thing that we're going over today, and we're gonna go over different parts about chord progressions and stuff like that. Now, one thing that I want to mention, I had a previous video about chords and I also had a previous video about scales. So if some of these things are unfamiliar to you, you might want to check those videos out. But even then, it's going to be pretty easy and pretty straightforward as far as what I lay out in the video. It's going to help you when it comes to making good chord progressions, dictating the vibe. You won't really need to go to other places to learn about chords for the most part because I'm gonna give you a lot of knowledge that is basically the base of most of the stuff that you'll learn when it comes to chord progressions. So it's gonna help you out a lot. I hope you enjoy the video. Before we get into it, please put a like on the video. It helps your boy out, but let's get into it. So let's talk about chord progressions, how they work and everything. So. First off, a chord progression is a series of chords in a song. They are usually defined by Roman numeral numbers, and the Roman numeral numbers determine what the root notes of the chords that are used are. So let's break that down and what that actually means. So you may see something like a 165 chord progression. So we're on the major scale right here, C major. This is a C major scale. So let's look at that. We're gonna do a one, six, five chord progression. So we would start on one, which would be the first note in the scale. So we're doing a one, six, five chord progression. The next note is gonna be a six because this is the one, this is a six. Let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the root note for the next chord. Then after that, it's five. So obviously that would be the one right here. Now, the chord progression as far as, you know, the one, six, five, if that's what we're gonna call it, it doesn't dictate the rhythm, it just dictates the sequence of the chords. We're gonna push this down, and we're gonna push this down to a different octave. Now. If you remember from the last one, we're gonna build basic triads because if you're looking at a chord progression and it just says the basic, like, you know, just the number and everything, that's what it is. So boom, boom. So for a basic triad, you remember, we just skip every other note. That's what it is. So boom, we do that. We're just building it based off of each bass note, each root note for each chord. Let's listen to that now being that we have built the chords on top of those. So that is in a major scale. That is a one, six, five chord progression. Let's do the same thing with the minor. How about we do a one, three, four chord progression? So it's C minor, so we start here. That's C, that's the first root because we're starting on a one. Let's go up. One, two, three, that would be the third. This would be the fourth because that's right after that in the scale. So again, we're just gonna build triads around that by skipping every other note. So instead of putting it here, we're gonna put one here. We're gonna skip that note there and put one there. So we got the first triad or the first chord. We put one here, we put one here because we're skipping notes again. All right, we do the same thing. And with that, we have a chord progression. So that is how chord progressions work. So when you see like a Roman numeral one, four, whatever, that's basically what it is. So that's the basics of how chord progressions work. Now, when you're in your DAW or anything like that, you know, whether it's Ableton or Fruity Loops or anything like that, you're not really going to be seeing numbers or anything like that. You're, you may have a scale guider or whatever, but this is just good to know because Again, chord progressions dictate the mood of the song for the most part. It dictates the vibe, it dictates the feel. So if you find a chord progression, knowing that just lets you know how to plug in the notes and how it works. But let's get a little bit deeper to help you with building your own chord progression. So now we're gonna talk about tonics, subdominance, 
and dominance. Very important. So I'm going to break this down real simple. When it comes to major and minor scales, they usually have seven notes. The strongest notes are the tonic, the subdominant, and the dominant. The tonic is the root note of the scale that you are in. So if you are in a C major scale, C is going to be the tonic. If you're in an F minor scale, F is going to be the tonic. That's basically how it goes. So the tonic basically resolves really well from anything that you're going from in most cases. So it's home base. Just think of that as home base. The tonic is home base. That's where you want to land or that's where you want to start either or usually. So let's move on to the subdominant. The subdominant is the fourth note. So that is one, two, three, four. So being that we're in a C major scale, the fourth note in the scale is a F. So that is powerful, but it's not the most powerful. The most powerful is the dominant, which is the fifth. The fifth note is G. Now the reason that's important to know that those are the most important notes in almost any seven note scale, major or minor that you use is because those are usually the chords that you'll build around, the one, the four, and the five. So let's just listen to those in major and minor and see how they sound. Let's go to the other one and do the same thing with the minor. Sounds a little bit different, but still sounds sweet. Now, the thing about that, if you notice in the major and minor scale, guess what? The first, the fourth and the fifth, they are both the same notes in each scale. They're both the same notes in each scale. Just a good thing to know when you're building your chord progression. But we're going to bring that together in the next thing that we're going to talk about, which is cadence. And that's going to let you know why this is important. So now this is where it gets a bit more practical and we start talking about cadence. What cadence is, is basically a two part progression and it's going from one chord and resolving to the other. Basically creates a sense of resolution. When you look at most chord progressions, that's how come you see them start with one in most cases because one resolves the best. But if you look at most chord progressions, you'll also notice most of them end with a four or a five. So we're not going to break down all the cadences that there are. We're just going to break down a couple. We're going to put a one chord right here because these are going to be resolved into one. A plagal cadence is a four to one progression. Let's listen to that. Brings you back home, resolves well. Sounds good. Now, an authentic cadence is a five to one. That sounds good as well. Let's listen to those in minor. We're in C minor. Let's listen to it really quick. We're going to go with a plagal cadence, which again is a four to one. Let's listen to it. Resolves very menacingly, but let's listen to the authentic cadence, which again, that is a five to one. Sounds very good. There are other types of cadences, but we will not go over those because for the type of music that I make, you know, as far as rap and even most contemporary music, as far as pop music, EDM or any genres like that, in most cases, it's, you know, five to one or four to one in most cases. That's just what it is. But what that means and why that's important, when you're making chord progressions, you should consider ending with a four or five and beginning the chord progression with the one in most cases, because that sounds good. We got a one and a five chord right there. Let's put something in front of it like a two chord and let's see how that sounds looping. Sounds pretty good, but instead of that, let's replace that chord, try something else. Let's try a seven, why not? Sounds good, but let's invert some of these because guess what? These have the same notes. Both of these chords have some of the same notes, the seven and the five. They share the D and they share the A. So 
Let's play it again. So before we get to making chord progressions and stuff like that, I just want to sprinkle a little bit more game on you as far as these matching notes that I've mentioned and everything. Let's talk about this real quick as far as substituting for the four and for the five instead of using those if you want to get creative and stuff like that. This is a good game that took me a long time to find, so let me lay it on you. You notice both of these, you know, they share two notes. So a seven is kind of a decent substitution for a five. So let's try ending chord progression with a seven and see how it sounds. How about we do a six in front of it? A six chord. It sounds very good resolving. Now that's a seven chord, it's not a five chord, but it's a good substitution for it. Now, let's do something like this. The three chord has two of the same notes as the one. Now it's not gonna resolve as good as the one because it doesn't have the tonic. Let's just listen to it and see how it sounds anyway. Sounds pretty decent. Now remember the other type of cadence I mentioned, which is the four to one. This is a one chord because we're in C minor. This is a four chord. So let's listen to that really quick. Now if we do a two chord, it shares two of the same notes. So we could just take that away and instead of making it a four chord, just make it a two chord. Let's listen to that. So those are good things to think about when you're making chord progressions. Maybe you want to end it with a two back to one or maybe a seven back to one. You know, see how it sounds with what you're doing. If you watch the last tutorial, including this one, you know, we know a bit about chords. Now we know a bit about progressions. So, you know, we're going to use some of the stuff that I taught you to make a quick progression. Let's change it from C minor to We'll say D sharp minor right there, boom. So we're on D sharp, all the ghost notes will shift up. We're gonna start on D sharp. We're gonna end on a five, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So that's gonna be that note right there. Now what's in between, it doesn't really matter. It just matters if it sounds good or not to me. So we're gonna do a seven, Let's transpose that down. So with this, we're going down. Let's make basic triads. And we water whip, water whip, got and start whip it. So boom, we got we got something that sounds good right there. Let's stretch it out a little bit and use some of the stuff that I learned or that I taught you. So So with this, again, this right here, this is going to be a 7th chord. We're going to double this up. That's just a voice in because we already got that. That's the root note of this chord. or this is gonna be a seventh chord because we just skipped one other note, put that there. We just have the same root note hitting twice in the chord, so that's just a voicing, that's all that is. Now what we're gonna do is voice it a little bit different. We're gonna take the third and shift it up an octave in each chord to spread it out further. We're gonna take the root, we're gonna copy that. And I'm gonna put that down two octaves. Now under that, I'm gonna take the thirds which I moved up, I'm gonna copy those, I'm gonna paste those, I'm gonna move those down two octaves, 
swing it back. Erase these because I know those aren't the thirds. Let's boost it up an octave. Let's take these bass notes back down an octave. So you could get really creative with it and you should be able to make much better chord progressions and you should be able to understand chord progressions in a way that you probably haven't before this if you didn't have this knowledge. So with the video that I just did and the previous videos, you should have a really good foundation to where you have the tools to make good progressions, explore and figure out what sounds good, what you like and create different vibes. It should give you a great foundation and keep you well rounded. I hope you have fun with that. I hope it gives you a lot of game. And also, you know, I'm still going to keep giving you chord progressions in the future, like the straight to the sauce. So, you know, I had the money man chord progression and I had the, you know, most used chord progression in rap right now video, you know, so check those out. They come with free midis, free midis. So, you don't gotta put in an email or anything like that, so check those out. But outside of that, I have the Yasuke sample pack I just dropped. Be sure to check that out. And on that note, I will see y'all another day, somehow, some way. I'm out. <laughs>